Professor Ising, welcome and thanks very much for joining us here to talk today about uh, the status of the Eurozone. Thank you. Um, as former chief economist of the European Central Bank, why do you think the ECB is currently not achieving its 2% inflation target? On the ECB and inflation, uh, I would say first that uh, I'm not concerned about the present situation. The inflation rate is so low in the euro area mainly due to very low oil prices. All euro area members are oil importing countries. So it's a big gift uh, to those economies for households. Uh, the terms of trade are very positive for the eurozone. So my first point is that I would not be concerned. Second is I don't see that uh, this would lead uh, to a deflationary spiral. So uh, ECB could be much more relaxed. Uh, inflation will come back uh, one day, not so late in the future. And how much inflation do you think actually we do need? Because we, on the other hand side, have high debt, public debt and private debt. And many people are arguing you need a lot of inflation to come back down to a real level of uh, indebtedness that is healthier than now. I don't see inflation as uh, the right, the appropriate tool uh, to solve the uh, debt problem. Um, by the way, the governments uh, take profit widely from very low interest rates, which are related to low inflation. So uh, uh, Germany, uh, even more so Italy, for example, uh, saves billions, 10 20 billions and more uh, every year by very low interest rate payments. So this is not the problem. On the other hand side, entire industries like banking and insurances are very much suffering from that low interest rate currently. Is that the solution to keep it that low and drive entire industries out of business? No, these extremely low interest rates, uh, which are now uh, present for quite a number of years, create big, big problems. This is true for the banking industry, especially for the insurance companies, life insurance companies. Uh, over time, if this would continue for very long, even the existence of those companies would be at stake. So this uh, should change one day. And I think the time of coming to more normal multi policy measures uh, is coming. Voices are currently rising that the uh uh, policy of the ECB, and these voices come from Germany but also from other countries, is not the right way to go forward uh, with quantitative easing and extreme measures uh, being pulled currently. Um, what is your view on um, whether that's rather helpful for the development or whether ha harmful? I would separate uh, the policy of the ECB in two periods. After the financial crisis in 2008, I think it was appropriate to act decisively with very low interest rates, with quantitative easing, or you would say traditionally open market measures. Uh, but uh, since two or three years now, the additional positive effect of uh, increased quantitative easing is getting lower and lower and negative side effects are increasing. So uh, I think here, as I said before, the time has come to go to more normal uh, multi-policy measures uh, and not extending this period uh, of even negative interest rates more in the future. With the euro in the eurozone, obviously uh, different countries cannot balance their trade deficits and cannot um, balance um, labor cost with uh, using the currency anymore. Uh, on the other hand side, Angela Merkel has said if the euro fails, um, the eurozone might fail. What's your view on how to strike the balance between devaluating currencies and keeping the eurozone together? First, um, multi-union having a single currency means one size of multi-policy has to fit all. Uh, the ECB cannot do anything about uh, this divergence in countries. Uh, it's the average situation which is a fundament for uh, the policy measures of the ECB. Uh, so countries must prepare themselves, must do their home task uh, to live with this regime of a single monetary policy. Uh, on the Chancellor's remark, uh, I don't agree. Uh, I think a collapse of the euro, which I don't see, 
would have dramatic impact economically and politically uh, on the Eurozone and on Europe as a whole. Uh, but in the end, Europe is more than just the Euro. And if you look at Europe as a whole, um, there's uh, different uh, types of unification. Yeah? One is the fiscal um, union, one is the monetary union, one is the political union, and uh, sort of we only have one out of all three. What's your view on the next steps? Uh, is it rather going forward into integration or taking a step back? This is indeed uh, the situation we are in. It's uh, European Bond Union and the crossroads going forward or going back. I would not call it backwards. I would uh, call it going back to the rules uh, which were agreed on uh, when the Maastricht Treaty was signed. Uh, but um, I think the idea of a political union in Europe is farther away than any time since uh, the end of the Second World War. It will, would not find support by the people. Um, uh, is there any politician, any government, which would dare to have a referendum uh, on creating political union? Uh, the answer to that is very clear. So uh, this is a vision for the more distant future at best. Uh, but if this is not realistic for the time being, for the foreseeable future, then any uh, idea of going in the direction of a fiscal union loses its anchor. Because for that you need uh, democratic legitimation, which can be supported only by, in the end, by the people, by the voters, And uh, so fiscal union without political union, I think, would be a very dangerous way to go. Professor Ising, when you took office uh, at the ECB, uh, you called the euro an experiment that we could try. And uh, now, a couple of years later, obviously, what is your view? Is the experiment, has it failed or do we need a pause? Uh, I wouldn't call it uh, failed, uh, but uh, better expectations have been disappointed. Many mistakes uh, have been made. Uh, I would not call the euro a failure. Uh, I wonder if today, uh, if we had to start with this uh, experience, anybody would uh, suggest uh, to create a single currency with so many heterogeneous members as we have now. But uh, the euro is a matter of fact, uh, so we have to live with that and uh, adopt uh, to a situation of sovereign countries which share a common currency and uh, a single European central bank. Professor Ising, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you.